Hi, this is Wenda from Book Nookly. Today I'm going to show you how to assemble the fireplace file that I have up on my website and Etsy shop. And I'm going to split it into two steps. The first step is to get everything sized for print, then cut. And the second step will be to apply the realistic graphics. So let's get started with the resizing. First, you'll see that the graphic comes in as a basic cut. The first thing we're going to do is change that to print, then cut. Then I'm just going to dip over to the right to make sure I don't have any size errors, and I don't. Now I'm going to take a look at the size, and I notice that my fireplace opening is less than two inches, so I want to change that and make it a little bigger. I'm going to ungroup everything, and then I'm going to align it center. I'm going to do that so that I can resize it and make sure that everything aligns proportionately, and I can see exactly what my largest cut is. I know that my largest cut can be 7.71 for the large size that I have. So I'm going to change that. It makes everything proportionately bigger. So now, now that I have everything sized the way that I want it, I can apply the realistic design. And that is step two. I just want to tell you right now that if you have realistic cardstock, which I usually do, you don't have to do this. You don't have to apply that design, the designs that I'm going to show you. You can just do the basic cut. But today, I'm also going to show you how you can use those realistic patterns that I've included with this purchase. First, you upload them into Cricut. And then you apply the brick. So we're going to do the brick first. You apply the brick to your canvas. And you can see that my fireplace is, as we said, it's about 7.71 inches wide or tall. Um, so I'm going to change the size of the brick so that it's smaller and looks more realistic. Then select everything, just, you know, the brick and the fireplace and choose slice in the lower right hand corner. And ta-da! Now I'm going to keep the brick and I'm going to hide the, the original pattern. So when I send this to the printer, it is just going to print then cut the brick. Now I need the darker brick is for the back of the fireplace. And again, I'm going to look at the width of the back and I'm going to see that it's like, I don't know, the tallest part is like six inches. So I'm going to make sure that this brick is a little bit smaller, but not too much smaller than the front brick, just to add a little bit of depth. And then I just put it in front of that square, select both that brick and the square and choose slice in the lower right hand corner and ta-da, there's my slice. I'm just going to hide that maroon one. And now all we have to do are the logs. So we have a small log and then we have two medium sized logs. I have a small log and a medium sized log template. I'm just going to, once again, resize everything. I'm going to put this actually in front so that I can see it a little bit better. Um, and then just resize the graphics so that the wood is on the long part and that the ends have that end kind of <laughs> look to them. Select both things, choose slice, and bam! So cool, right? And then just hide that. And I'm just going to be quiet. <laughs> while I show you how I do the other uh, two logs. And actually, since the other two logs are exactly the same, I'm just going to delete one of them and then just do this once and then copy it when it's done. Okay, then you choose make and it puts it on the, wants to send it to the printer. Now, 
I just am showing you this real quick. I always use system settings. I always toggle that on and I always allow bleed because it cuts inside the bleed. Um, and the reason I use system settings is because my default is to take the paper out of the paper tray and I need to always tell it to use the rear paper feed. Plus, I need to tell it what kind of cardstock or paper I'm, I'm printing on and I'm printing on 100 pound cardstock, white cardstock, which uh, I tell the system is uh, premium presentation paper. And then just choose print and away we go. Okay, are you ready? We are now going to fold. We're going to fold all of those perforated edges. Every single place that you see a dashed, a dotted line, anything that is not solid, you are gonna fold. And look at me go. Just a little side note, I did update the fireplace design very slightly so that there's no gap in that shelf. It looks so much better. For this, I'm gonna be using the permanent double-sided tape, and I'm just gonna put a bead of tape on all of the flaps at the end. Anything that has a flap gets some tape. And this is the permanent tape, so it's nice and sticky. And then I'm going to use the darker brick back, making sure it's long-wise, and I'm gonna line it up with my brick fireplace and make sure that I see brick when I look through the fireplace. And it all lines up perfectly. Look at that, it's so cool. I'm just tucking all of my bends and making sure that the tabs stick to the fireplace. And right here, I did make a little bit of change. You'll notice it when you buy the file that there won't be a gap on the side when you look at the shelf like there is right now. But essentially, everything lines up perfectly. You can see that that back brick is exactly where the top of the side tab is going to lay. So see how it's nice and straight? And then you just tuck that in and put it in and that's it. That is how easy this cool fireplace is. I know it's amazing. It's so amazing. Oh, and I already did the logs. I'll show you how to do the logs right now. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do to create the logs is we're going to take something that's very round and we're going to bend the cardstock over that round item because in the end, we want our logs to be round-ish, right? So I'm just going to bend each piece over this round long stick I have. Then for this, I'm gonna be using some Aileen's Tacky Glue, and I'm going to put a bead of glue on the tab of each of these logs and glue them into their circle. I will also be using a screwdriver to hold it, you know, to really push it in really super good. I also want to point out that if you want a rounder log, then go just past where that perforated edge is on the tab and that will help get the log, the log rounder. Otherwise, it'll sort of have a one flat side. Okay, now I have my three logs glued. I've kind of given them a moment to dry. And then all I'm gonna do is bend the ends, those little tabs down, and then put a bead of glue, and then kind of stick them and squeeze them into the end of the log. They don't have to be perfect. They just need to give the illusion of a log, right? And the thing about wood is that the outside, the bark, looks very different than the inside. So we just need to kind of give the illusion of the log. And that's how you put together your fireplace logs. I'm just gonna speed this up. It's the same thing that I did on the first log, I'm doing on the second, and I'm doing on the third, I'm just 
bending the tabs down, putting a bead of glue and sticking that end into the log to make it look more like a piece of wood. And that is how to assemble the miniature DIY dollhouse book nook fireplace with logs. I love it. Visit me on my website for more dollhouse and book nook cup files for Cricut.